the things that's really interesting in this area is just the diversity of plants. Any square foot of tundra has dozens of lichens and mosses and flowers and shrubs all growing on top of each other. I encourage you to get right down on your hands and knees and take a close look. It is so cool. If anybody brought their hand lens, this will help you see things very, very close up. It's like a microscope. Whew. Like there's so much detail in this flower. Plants are the foundation of life. All the animals and humans and ecosystems rely on plants. What about this plant, the arctic These willow? These are smaller than ours. The shorter ones are uqfik, the longer ones are abalakhe. Cool. Mm. I've been working with Inuit and Greenlandic people. They've been uh, telling stories that bring these plants to life in a whole new way. In our hometown, they're just like this big. Oh. I'm a teacher, and with my students, I gave them a paper and the picture that they have to look for it. Yes, same as this. If they found it and they put them in the ziplock, and when we're back to our classroom, we talk about them. I have a whole bunch of different types of Arctic species. We've been learning about the uses of these plants in local communities, as well as their names in the indigenous language. It's a deep historical knowledge of the land and, and our connection with it, and sometimes that uh, can be undervalued in the spaces of academia. People think, you know, you have to have a degree to have that knowledge, and in actuality, there's this great richness and education and context of being a helper that exists in the Inuit communities as a whole. What's the plant life in the pond? Oh, algae. Yeah. Uh, these microscopic algae, they do photosynthesis. That's the base of the food web. You know, scientists always devise new instruments that allow you to observe new things. Uh, but at the core of science, um, to me, there is the observation. Look at this. What? Oh. The wider ones. There is this parallel path. Scientists are interested in knowledge, and there is this repository of knowledge that is based on thousand years of people who keenly observe uh, the environment. And that's, that's the base of science. You start from observations. We're talking about healing properties of things. We're talking about, you know, um, years and years of experience that people would have had just in their everyday knowledge that is kind of being recaptured and reintroduced to young people. We call it uh, it's a deep. When they go hunting, they, if they don't have a wood, yeah. From raining, yeah. they put them out and they light up easily. These are waterproof. Even mm. if it's wet, they get fire easily too. Yeah. You know, humans, we are curious creatures. And curiosity is a base of knowledge and, and science on one side, but also traditional knowledge. We wouldn't be so successful if we were not able to extract information from the environment. When we use the word scientist, we have a very specific idea of that as a, as a society. And I think that some of these uh, elders and knowledge keepers like our teachers here uh, are just as knowledgeable. They bring different parts of the same puzzle together and kind of collaborating together means we have a fuller picture of what things are. And I think that that's just kind of starting that relationship to listen to each other more deeply and, and be able to connect those things uh, more completely.